Uh, what is meant by the phrase husband of one wife as it pertains to the qualification for elders and deacons? Is it merely a prohibition against polygamy? Does it speak to the commitment of the man to his wife? Does it set forth this guideline that no man, if divorced, should be allowed to take the role of elder or deacon? Uh, let's just say certainly it eliminates polygamy. But the problem with limiting the meaning of that verse uh, in 1 Timothy 3 to polygamy is that polygamy was generally not legal uh, in most of the places to which uh, that, that text would apply. So evidently that's not the main background problem. Uh, the main background problem is probably what, uh, what we would call in this country now serial monogamy. Uh, which is uh, a man putting away a wife and getting another wife and, uh, and perhaps even putting her away and getting another wife. That was uh, very common in the Roman Empire in the first century. And uh, by the way, b women were very vulnerable and abused and uh, you can understand just how devastating that would be. Covenant faithfulness is, is, is God's reputation, is God's glory, and he calls for his church to be led by those who will demonstrate that kind of covenant faithfulness. So, the question quickly came, does that mean that no man if divorced should be allowed to take on the role of elder or deacon? Uh, I can't say that. What I can say is that what's being held forth in scripture is the minimum expectation that that individual be known as the husband of one wife. I'll have to leave it to the biblical logic guided by scripture of a local biblical rightly ordered congregation to come to a conclusion as to exactly how that's to be applied in the case of any individual. Let's remember that the list of qualifications in 1 Timothy 3, also in Titus, includes that, but more than that, uh, of being a person of good reputation, and you could just, not to mention able to teach and, and rightly ordered family and all the rest. So here's where different congregations uh, might come to a different uh, answer to that question, but I don't think the question is well answered as just a concept. It's gotta be a specific case in which the church is, is reasoning faithfully from scripture, and uh, we'll have to trust the local church to do that. But it does hold up the fact that the picture of covenant faithfulness that we should look for is an individual who's the husband of one wife, who is a picture of that covenant faithfulness, uh, not only even in the context of marriage, but especially in the context of marriage.